This meeting of the Circuit Court of Aldermen will now come to order. Please rise for the sake of the Pledge of Allegiance, after which Alderman Vaughn would like to yield to Pastor Stevens to lead us in a word of prayer, and we will observe a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we bow before you this evening, and we thank you, first of all, for uh, your faithfulness throughout this day that allows us to be here. We thank you as we've just pledged our allegiance to the flag of the country that you allow us to live in by your grace. We thank you for the freedoms we enjoy. Father, we thank you for the institution of government, and I pray tonight for our mayor and our city leaders. And first of all, Lord, we thank you for them. We thank you for the tireless uh, effort that they've put in to make in our city the very best it can be, and I just pray that you'll guide them tonight. As they meet, uh, grant them your wisdom as they discuss items of business and, uh, and help us to be uh, the city that you've always desired us to be. Father, we just, uh, again, we thank you for all of your blessings. We certainly pray your traveling mercies as we return home later to the city. In your name we pray. Amen. You have before you a copy of the written agenda. Are there any proposed changes to the agenda? Mayor Madden, recognize. Alderman Wynn. Okay, page three, item 10B. And that 10B item, as in boy? Uh -huh, 10B as in boy, page three. Okay. On the boy business. Let's delete the word from the word in to the word street. All right, what line are we on? The second line. Start at in and go to the third line and delete the word street. Oh, hold on one second. We're on item B under mayor's business. Uh-uh, no. Can item B started? under board, uh -huh. board business. Uh-huh. All, right. All right. So the second line, the word. In. And go to the word street. And that's the deletion from that item. All right. So the item will read. Consideration of approval of the Starkville police staff to be housed during the renovations of the police department. Mm -hmm. Leave that as point. Yes. Any further proposed revisions? Is there any objection? Any objection to the proposed revision? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, Alderman Wynn, do you have any further proposed no. revisions? Alderman Carver. I guess to that, is there a proposed location or is that something we'll discuss at that time? We'll discuss it at that time. Further proposed revisions. Any further proposed revisions? Alderman Ball. Mr. Mayor, I want to add, I'd like to add something right to the agenda. Consideration of proving the lease purchase of two pickup trucks off of the state contract for get, from Gary Daniel Ford in the amount of $47,578 to be used for the landscape revision and organization to obtain the lowest quote for financing of said vehicles. I would like to move that the first item on the mayor's business. Do you mind moving it to the second item under mayor's business so that the link can make their presentation? No, sir. I want to put it right there. All right. So the you, you do mind or you don't mind? Uh, put it on the first item on the mayor's business. Oh, you want it on the first one? Yes, sir. All right. So the proposed revision from Alderman Vaughn is to add under Roman numeral 9, mayor's business, the consideration of approving the lease of two pickup trucks off of state contract from Gray Daniels Ford in the amount of $47,578 to be used by the Landscape Division and authorization to obtain the lowest quote for financing of said vehicles. That would be added as item A. Item A would become item B and the agenda would be uh, reordered uh, to uh, accommodate the change. Alderman Vaughn, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objections? Do you have any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, please note the change. Alderman Vaughn, do you have any further proposals? No, sir. Alderman Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Vice Mayor is, is in agreement to a consent agenda tonight. It may be, all of you may want to get your pens out. It's going to be a little extensive. Um, Mayor, the first matter uh, that we're going to agree to tonight is um, approval of the Board of Alderman Minutes of April 19, 2016. Proposed revision from Alderman Perkins is to place the only item under Roman numeral four on the consent agenda. That is a consideration of the minutes of the April 19th, 2016 meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville, incorporating any and all changes as recommended by the City Attorney, otherwise as presented uh, 
Uh, proposed revision is to place that matter on the consent agenda. Alderman Perkins, is that your proposed revision? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, please note the change. Alderman Perkins, do you have further proposed revision? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Let's go to the mayor's business. We'll go ahead and first take up the matter that we just added to the agenda uh, for the two trucks for the landscape division uh, that be placed on the consent agenda. Proposed revision from Alderman Perkins is to place uh, Roman numeral 9A on the consent agenda. That is the approval of the lease, of lease purchase of two pickup trucks off state contract from Great Daniels Ford in the amount of $47,578 to be used by the landscape division and authorization to obtain the lowest quote for financing of said vehicles as presented. Alderman Perkins, is it your proposed vision to place that on the consent agenda? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Do I hear any objection? Objected. Do we have any matter for that at the table, or is that something? Was it moved? It was moved. It, so it, that's what it No, you do not have that in your packet. It's I don't feel a, comfortable with that being added to the agenda tonight last minute. I still don't, yeah, I don't have any information on that. So, Mayor, I, I can just not have a consent agenda. I mean, do we not need a consent agenda tonight? Or not on that item you added tonight. Sir? Y'all don't talk back and forth. May I be recognized? Alderman Perkins, you still have the floor. It, does the gentleman from one agree to this or not? No, sir. I have nothing further for consent. Any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Are there any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Uh, the city attorney has something he'd like to have. Mr. Mayor, looking on item uh, item 11B2C under Department of Business and Planning, page 4, discussion and consideration of whether the property at 584 Curry Street falls under the statute 21-1911. That matter in consultation with Mr. Sanders is, is a bit premature for tonight, so I would recommend pulling that out. City Attorney has recommended revising the agenda to omit item 11B2C, the discussion and consideration of whether property at 584 Curry Street is a menace to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community pursuant to Mississippi Code Annotated 21-19-11. Do I hear a proposed revision? A member of the All right. Uh, Alderman Maynard has proposed revising the agenda uh, to omit uh, item 11B2C. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That item has been omitted from the agenda. Are there any further proposed revisions? Mr. Maynard, Alderman Wynn. Uh, I had Wynn first, then I'll have Maynard after Wynn. Um, page six, in, um, in item 11I on the personnel, number two. What would you like to do with it? Um, I would like to put that place in on consent, I'm sorry. All right, proposed revision is to place item 11I2 on the consent agenda. That is request for permission to advertise to fill the vacant position of equipment operator in the street department. Alderman Wynn, is that your proposed yes. revision? Yes. Do I hear any objection? Mr. Mayor, I object to any other matter going on consent tonight. Any further proposed revisions? I'm going to speak to the housekeeping layer. All right. All right. Um, the only reason I object to that first item, if, and uh, normally it's protocol to bring in something, the two sanitation trucks, was there a reason? Is that a time sensitive something, or is that? Um, well, uh, to, to give you the background on it, um, it was originally uh, placed on the agenda before the agenda went out on Friday. A full uh, packet cover sheet uh, was prepared by the, the department head on it. It is a budgeted uh, matter, uh, and I received a request from an alderman uh, to wait until we received our audit, which is forthcoming in a matter of weeks to make that acquisition. Uh, so I asked the department head uh, if she would pull it off the agenda to wait on the audit report, and she agreed. Nothing abnormal about it? What now? Nothing abnormal? No, nothing abnormal other than it was worked up, it was put on the agenda, and it was pulled from the agenda. But it was completely worked up. Uh, so if you have the impression that it's uh, haphazard and uh, it, it may not be clear where the funding is coming from, that, that's not the case at all. Okay. Thank you. And another thing is Alderman Perkins always liked, he likes to have information on, on the deadline of Wednesday. And so if we'll just stick to that. I'm fine with that being consent, but that's the first I'd heard of anything on it. So I wasn't able to check my packet until Monday and it was not on there at the time. So thank you. All right. So do I hear any further proposed revisions? Alderman Wynn. Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. Yes, ma'am. If you will, will you start back with the consent agenda? Alderman Littles um, has a child at Starkville High. 
and uh, he wants to go to the awards program tonight. So we're trying. To, if you don't mind, can we please? Mayor, could we take just a, a brief recess, please? Okay. About two minutes, Mayor. Without objection. Without objection, we'll take a brief recess. Any objection? Seeing none, we'll stand in recess for two minutes. The meeting will now come back to order. Are there any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Mr. Mayor, may I be recognized? You may. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer for the consent agenda. Um, under Mayor's business, item B, I'm, I'm sorry, item C, consideration of bids for 2016 street improvement project set in low bid and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with the approved contractor. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to add item nine. It would actually be item mm -hmm. item nine D now. Uh, the uh, add the following matter to the consent agenda: the consideration of bids for the 2016 Street Improvement Project, except accepting the low bidder, and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with the approved contractor as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Um, what was the edited agenda, the item, consideration of approving the lease purchase of two pickups off state contract from Great Daniels Ford for 47578 to be used in the landscape division and authorization to attain the lowest quote for said financing of vehicles? I'd like to add that to consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to add item 9A to the consent agenda. That is the approval of the lease purchase of two pickup trucks off of the state contract from Gray Daniels Ford in the amount of $47,578 to be used by the Landscape Division and authorization to obtain the lowest quote for financing of said vehicles as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. And do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. That matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir. Adding item 9, which is now E, consideration of low quote from Stidman Construction in the amount of $43,349 for labor and equipment for Yellow Jack to drive box cover and insulation, authorize the mayor to execute a construction contract with Stedman Construction and authorize city engineer to purchase all necessary materials and supplies for the cost not to exceed $70,000 for a total project cost not to exceed $113,309 to the consent agenda. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 9E as stated by Alderman Maynard and as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Um, under board business, 10 item A on consent. Consideration of a resolution of the mayor and board of aldermen the city of Starkville, Mississippi, determining that the property located at 100 East Drive, Martin Luther King Drive, East Martin Luther King Drive, is in such a state of disrepair and uncleanliness and structural instability that is menace to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community. Motion as presented in the packet with that resolution as presented in the packet. Proposed. Uh, revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 10A as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any second? Or do I hear any objection? Oh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Larry, will you intend to speak on your project tonight? No, I don't have anything else to say. And are you, are you familiar with what is in, in the uh, resolution as it currently stands? All right, uh, it, it sets up a 14-day period uh, for you to uh, have all tenants vacate the property and to uh, uh, secure the property uh, so that uh, but people would not be able to enter the property, and then a six-month period uh, for you to uh, re repair uh, the damage on the property. Oh, and to turn off the water and sewer, uh, in, in addition to secure the property. 
Is there any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Mayor, do you have further proposed? Under Department Business 2A, discussion and consideration of special events request by Alzheimer's Mississippi Incorporated to hold the 2016 Golden Triangle Alzheimer's Walk with in kind services to be held October 1st, 2016 on the consent agenda. And the city attorney's asked to be recognized. Alderman Maynard, would you accept the revision as stated to say pending the execution of the indemnification page? Yes, sir. In Starkville's special events packet. So noted. Uh, proposed revision by Alderman Maynard as stated and modified uh, at the request of the city attorney is to place item 11 to a and discussion and consideration of special events request by Alzheimer's Mississippi Incorporated to hold the 2016 Golden Triangle Alzheimer's Walk with in kind services to be held October 1st, 2016, uh, pending uh, the completion of the indemnification page, otherwise as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Mayor, is that your uh, proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Mayor, item 11 2 B, consideration the appointment of Will Sanders to the Tree Advisory Board with the term set to expire May 1st, 2019 to the consent agenda. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11 B to B as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir. Mayor, under 11 B to D, Discussion and consideration of approval with the condition of FP 16-04 for final plat request for subdividing one parcel located directly south of the Starkville Christian School on Lynn Lane in an R5 zone into two lots with the parcel number 10200000004.00. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11B2D. And item 11 B 2 D uh, on the consent agenda as stated. Alderman Manners, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, the matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Manners, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir, Mayor. Under 11 D 1, uh, request approval to reject the low bid of $216,880 from Osborne Construction Company for the Yellow Jacket Drive bridge replacement project due to the bid far exceeding the project budget on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11D1 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none of that matter has been placed on the consent agenda? Alderman Manager, you have further proposed revision. <clears throat> on 11D2, request approval to accept the low quote from Lee's precast concrete in the amount of $49,255.40 <coughs> for the precast box culverts for the Yellow Jacket Bridge replacement project. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11D2 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Manders, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, Alderman Manders, do you have further proposed revision? Item 11D3, request approval to accept the low quote of groundstone construction in the amount of $9,982 for the West Main Drainage Improvement Project to be paid from Ward 7 discretionary funds on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place Item 11 D3 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Mm -hmm. Any objection? Saying none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Yes, sir. Place 11 D4 request approval to purchase and install rumble strips on the following streets E.L. Jones Drive, Vine Street, Henderson Street, with the funds to purchase the materials to be paid from Ward 7 discretionary funds on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11D4 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. 
Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, item 11 D4 has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Manning, do you have further proposed revision? Item 11 D5, request approval to add E.L. Jones Drive from Greensboro Street to West Main to the 2016 overlay list with the funding for this project to come from Ward 7 discretionary funds on consent. <coughs> proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11 D5 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further <coughs> proposed revisions? Yes, sir, Mayor. Item 11 E2, approval of the April 2016, 2016 financial statements on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11E2 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Item 11E3, request approval of budget adjustment for fiscal year 2016, number three on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11E3 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman <coughs> Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Mayor, item 11F1, request authorization of Fire Chief Charles Yarborough to attend the 79th Mississippi Fire Chiefs Conference July 3rd through 5th, 2016 at the Natchez Convention Center with advanced travel of approximately $500 for hotel registration and meals to be placed on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11F1 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? <clears throat> yes, sir. Place item 11F2, request approval of the purchase of firefighter turnout gear from NAFECO at a cost of $6,327 with funds coming from fire rebate funds on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11F2 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Is there any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir. Item 11F3, request permission to allow Starbuck Fire Department to conduct a promotional process to fill one lieutenant and one sergeant position for fire station number five on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11F3 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any? I don't have an objection, but I want to just say for the record that this is a, a process that started years ago and slowly filling out that area and, and Providing adequate fire <coughs> privilege. Also on that on that um, on that item, it says to have a 90-day applicant pool stay open. Does you think that needs to be extended to 120 days, or what's the standard number that the fire services use? No, I think that's talking about the next one. This is just the okay. Year. While I got you, what's the number that you recommend? 90, or is it 120 better? Does that? I think 90. Be that's better. fine. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? 11 I 1, request approval to hire Tyler, Allen Davis, and Ken Jason Britt to fill vacant positions for firefighters in the fire department subject to one year probationary period and approval of the retention of candidates from this selection process for consideration to fill any additional vacant positions of firefighter classifications due to retirements, terminations, or approved additions to the fire department within a period of 90 days on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11 I1 as stated on the <coughs> consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have any further proposed revisions? 11 I2, request permission to advertise to fill a vacant position of equipment operator in the street department on consent. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to place item 11 I2 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Uh, request place item 11 I3, request permission to allow Alex Robinson to complete an internship with the City of Starkville Municipal Court Department on consent. 
Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11I3 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? I'd like to place item 11I4, request authorization to advertise to fill a vacant position of deputy court clerk in the municipal court department on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11I4 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revision? Mayor, item 11I5, request approval to hire John Michael Lay to fill the vacant position of certified police officer in the Stralpa Police Department on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11I5 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying no, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further <coughs> proposed revisions? Mayor, item 11I6, approval to hire two additional temporary part time employees at the airport on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11I6 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Yes, sir. Mayor 11J1, request approval to allow um, Corporal Tyler Davis, Officer Scott Calhoun, Officer Hunter Brown, and one other officer to be determined to attend the 15th annual National Law Fit Challenge in Pearl, Mississippi on June 9th through 11th, 2016 with advanced travel not to exceed $800 on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11J1 as stated on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed items for the, uh, do you have further proposed revisions for the agenda? 11J2, request approval to declare a 1997 Jeep, like number, 1J4FX58SXVC, <laughs> 668588, surplus, and advertise for sale on gov deals. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to add item 11J2 uh, to the consent agenda uh, as stated. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been added to the consent agenda. I'll let you read some. Item 11J3 on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to place item 11J3 on the consent agenda. That is the approval of allowing officers Andy Round and Taylor Wells to attend the 2016 Mississippi Law Enforcement Association Conference beginning <coughs> being held in the Iberville, Mississippi, June 12th through June 17th, 2016, with advanced travel not to exceed $900 as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. That matter's been placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Mayor, do you have further proposed revision? Yes, sir. I'd like to place item 11J4 on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Mayor to place item 11J4 on the consent agenda. That is the approval to apply for FY17 funding with the Justice Assistant Grant for $3,750 to be reimbursed of $5,274.88 in equipment purchases with the police department to provide the required match as presented. Alderman Manders, that's your proposed revision. Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? That matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Manders, do you have further proposed revisions? Item 11J5 on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Manners is to add item 11J5 to the consent agenda. That reads the approval to complete a budget modification with the FY16 police traffic safety grant, which is 100% reimbursable for an increase in equipment funding for a stalker radar and decreasing, decreasing the overtime line by $2,095 as presented. Alderman Manners, that's your proposed revision. Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Manners, do you have further proposed revision? 11L1 on consent. 
Alderman Maynard is proposed to adding item 11L1 to the consent agenda. That item reads as follows. The authorization for start for utilities to advertise for sources of supply bids for the period of July 1st, 2016 through December 31st, 2016 for the electric division as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have any further proposed revisions? Uh, 11L2. On consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to add item 11L2 to the consent agenda. That item reads as follows. The authorization to purchase an interrupter for the existing 69 kV switch at MSU at a cost of $15,208.51 from the manufacturer of the existing switch currently in use as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, sir. 11L3 on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to add item 11L3 to the consent agenda. That item is the authorization for Terry Kemp and Russell Hamilton to travel to Atlanta, Georgia on May 24th through 25th, 2016 to meet with SEDC, our CIS provider, with advanced travel up to $250 each as presented. Alderman Maynard, that's your proposed revision. Yes, sir. Do I have any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, do you have further proposed revisions? 11L3. Four on consent. Proposed revision by Alderman Maynard is to add item 11L4 to the consent agenda. That is the authorization to advertise for bids for the substation vacuum uh, circuit breakers for the Northeast Starkville substation on the consent agenda. Alderman Maynard, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter has been added to the consent agenda. Are there any further proposed revisions at this time? No, sir. A motion to approve. Mr. Mayor, I know we got we got uh, uh, four public appearances and, and and we don't supposed to have a two at a time. So how did we end up with four tonight? I authorized them. I can authorize them, or a board member can authorize them. Okay. Any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Any further proposed revisions? A motion to approve the agenda is revised as an order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Wallen to approve the agenda as a Aye, do I hear second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. Alderman Vaughn, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion saying none? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion clearly passes. Uh, the first matter you have before you is the approval of the consent agenda. Is there any objection to the approval of the consent agenda as revised? Any objection to the approval of the consent agenda? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. The consent agenda is revised, has been approved. The next matter you have before you is announcements and comments by the mayor and members of the board. And I have two new employee introductions for you tonight. The first is our uh, newest employee in the city clerk's office, Ms. LaShonda Wilson. LaShonda Wilson is a native of Crawford, Mississippi. She graduated from B.L. Moore High School and received an associate's degree in mortuary science from East Mississippi Community College, a bachelor's of business administration with an emphasis in management from Mississippi State University. Prior to joining the city of Starkville, LaShonda was a marketing rep representative with N.H. Williams State Farm Agency in Greenville, Mississippi. LaShonda is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Sylvester Davis. She has a brother, Lieutenant Sylvester Dwayne Davis of the Starkville Fire Department, and a sister, Pinky Edwards. LaShonda and her husband, Joe, are the proud parents of one son, Zachary. LaShonda enjoys spending time with family. She and her family attend Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming LaShonda Wilson. Next, I'd like to introduce James Yarbrough our newest driver in the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. <clears throat> James Yarborough is from Starkville and is a graduate of Starkville High School. He graduated from East Mississippi Community College with degrees in Industrial Electricity, uh, Electricity, Cosmetology, and Liberal Arts. James formerly worked at Hills Barbershop, the Octobahaw County School District, as a bus driver and a substitute teacher. James is the son of Alberta Yarborough, he has three brothers, Greg, George, and Jeffrey Yarborough, three sisters, Julia, Lanita, and Lawanda Yarborough. 
James is the proud parent of four children, Jawan, Janiah, Jayla, and Journey Yarbrough. During his free time, James enjoys coaching, working with children, and spending time with his family. James attends 16th Section Baptist Church. Please join me in welcoming James. And that concludes my comments this evening. Are there any comments by the members of the board? I saw Carver first, then I have Wynn after Carver. Well, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that Miss Dorothy Isaacs in the, in, with us tonight, and you've always kept us on our toes, and it's good to see you back. I didn't hardly recognize you. Uh, you're looking good. Good to see you. Thank you. Mayor, that's all that I was going to say. I told him down here we've got to recognize Miss Dorothy. Good evening, Miss Dorothy, and welcome to our new city hall. Further comments by the members of the board? Mayor, I guess I better say something besides that. I don't want her to send me to the house the next term since I'm her, her alderman. Uh, Ms. Isaac it wasn't intended to say anything publicly. You know, I had already spoken, but I guess since my other colleagues have spoken about you and I'm your alderman, I don't want to be in any trouble with you. So, <laughs> but good to have you here this evening. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Any further comments by the members of the board? Any further comments? Any further comments? Seeing none, it's good to have you back, Ms. Isaac. Amen. Amen. And we'll now move to citizen comments. At this time, any, any citizen wishing to make comments may do so by coming forward, introducing yourself, and you'll be recognized to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Good afternoon, Mayor and I'm in Ward 6. My name is Ann Birchfield. And I came to you with this issue, um, it was April the 5th about the concern of the neighborhood that I live in, which is Roundhouse Road. I've been having problems out of that place out of there since 2014 and 15, now 16. It's been traffic, excessively traffic coming through there. The loud music inside, in, if, I'm in the, if I'm on the outside, I think I'm being harassed. But on the outside, the music is very excessively loud. And when I come inside my house, it's one of the neighbors, he'll come to the end of the street and he'll just blast that music up super high. And it's not the thing that I need to, be, you know, need to be done. And I talked to my board, um, Mayor Perk Perkins, about it. And I just want to see what else I can get done. And I called the police out there on May the 8th when all this was going out. They came out the first time and you didn't do anything. So I called back. And I said, since you all left, the music didn't get turned off. And he said, well, we seen four, four people were sitting out there but we don't know where the music was coming from. So when I called him back, he came back out there. So they had turned the music up very, very loud at that point. And like I said, the traffic is extra. It's a dead end, and that traffic shouldn't be flowing like that all the time. And we did discuss the concerns you expressed in April at the uh, staff meeting immediately following that board meeting. Uh, and uh, police uh, have uh, increased patrol uh, in the area. I would encourage you when you encounter specific issues to continue to call the police uh, as quickly as you can because that gives them an opportunity to arrive at the scene before the uh, situation is dispersed. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Adam Ward Seven. I am a witness to all of Ms. Birdfield's problems. Our, uh, she don't need to be harassed. She don't need to be our, uh, uh, have stabbed. Uh, you wouldn't want it. You shouldn't want her. Uh, people do things because they can and can get away with it. All right, I wouldn't want no one to come up shot because they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And she is a member of Peter Rock, and they wouldn't want nothing to happen to that member. So let's take that under consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turk. I don't know if this is the right time for me to, uh, my name's Laura White. I'm the, one of the very few, if not only landowner, that may be opposed to the industrial park that's on the agenda tonight. My land abuts, adjoins all the Waldrop property. As a matter of fact, our family land forms a U. The Waldrop property goes in, U surrounds it. 
I haven't been able to get clear cut answers from anyone from the link as to how they're going to buffer our property. I bought 40 acres with the intent of building a home there when my son graduated from high school. That's next week. <laughs> we bought a house. We're moving back. We're ready, ready to build. And now they're going to do, I don't know what. They can't provide any answers. I did receive the budget. There's no addressing of the $10 million that the gas line's going to cost. I assume the city and county must be going to share that. They've quoted that they will be charging, or the millage will go up between, they say in the newspaper, five mills between county and city for us. Um, then the 10 million would come into play there at some point, so I assume that's another two and a half, something like that mills. I have concerns about the zoning. It's zoned agricultural or residential. We've been notified, nothing, not once, no contact, no information. I've called, I've emailed since February, and I'm here to get some help. Thank so you, Ms. White. I, I'd like for y'all to consider tabling it and looking into the details, the breakdown of the budget. We've been promised water, sewer, uh, paved roads. Uh, there's no internet in the area. We're not going to attract a high-tech business with no internet. There's no internet north of 82. So I have a lot of questions that haven't been answered, and I think y'all should be asking those questions too. Thank you, Ms. White. And all concerns related to zoning, uh, in the event any property is rezoned, uh, it, 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 we will follow uh, both local law and state law, which requires all adjacent property owners uh, to, to be noticed. Well, but if the city votes for the seven to invest seven million dollars, it's a given that you're going to vote to rezone it. Well, those those are two separate decisions. <coughs> uh, I, I understand your point, but tonight they're considering financing only. Okay, and are they going to consider the ten million dollar gas financing too? And that that's not part of the uh, financing proposal that's being considered tonight. Thank you, Mayor Board of Aldermen. Thank you for allowing me to speak for a few minutes on behalf of our new industrial park idea. I think we're on the threshold of maybe the greatest opportunity we've had in years to create jobs, to create more tax revenue, create more property tax revenue, to grow our community, raise wages, furnish some good jobs. I think we're on the threshold of doing that. And I think if we look at it, as a huge investment in our community, we're going to win. I have no doubt. The payoff will be tremendous. So I ask you to respectfully consider option one that we have decided is absolutely the best option we can have for a new industrial park. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Alderman, I would also like to speak on behalf of the consideration that you're giving tonight for the industrial park. As was noted in the release that we made, Mississippi State University is very strongly supportive of this. You're at a watershed moment as far as the decision that, you're, uh, that, that is before you tonight. I would also like to, in the interest of time, rather than having a number of people come up and speak, ask that members of the business community here in Starkville and Octavio County that are in support of option one, please stand. I think this in and of itself is a very strong statement of the fact that the business community as well as Mississippi State University is firmly behind uh, option one. The opportunity that you have tonight to be able to make a decision that is in the best interest of this city, county, and university for decades to come is before you. I would strongly encourage that you vote yes for option one. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shaw. Are there any further citizen comments? My name is Alicia Hart. I'm here on behalf of the Starkville Mayor's Youth Council, and I just want to say we're happy to attend. Do we have any other Starkville Mayor's Youth Council uh, participants here tonight? No, sir. Thank you so much, and thank you for, for your services here. 
Further citizen comment. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, Board of Aldermen, I'd just like to take a few minutes to voice my support in favor of option one of the industrial park. From time to time, we're given opportunities and that make a difference in people's lives, and I think this is one of them. And I have a little story that goes along with it, and you probably all heard it, but I want to make a little point with it. There was a boy walking along the shore, the shore of a sea tossing sand dollars back into the sea that had washed up on the shore. And a man at a distance was watching him. And as they grew nearer to each other, he pointed out and said, you know, son, you're not going to do much good. Though and those are just millions of them on the, on the beach. And the boy reached down and pitched another one back out to the sea and said, I don't know about that. He said, but I made a difference in that one right there. Tonight, you have that same opportunity as a young man did that pitched the sand dollars back into the sea. You can make a difference in the future of the generations of Stark Villians by voting in a four option one for a new industrial park for the city of Starkville. Higher paying jobs provide a stronger tax base and better standard of living for our citizens of Starkville. Your Golden Triangle Link has hired, uh, was hired uh, to manage the economic development opportunities for the city of Starkville. The Golden Opportunity, the Golden Triangle Link, after much research and deliberation, has put forth their seal of approval on option one. The property at the intersection of Highway 82 and Mississippi Highway 389. This property is vital for Starkville and Octavio County economic development well into the 21st century. There is, there is a saying, nothing ventured, nothing gained. This is not a gamble, but a calculated risk for the city of Starkville to take a look, to take right now. Look around us if you look at other communities that are represented in the Golden Triangle. And you'll find out that the industries have been made that make good fit. So you look over into Columbus, you look into West Point, and they've had industries that make good fits into that area. We can make a difference in the lives of the citizens of Starville, like the little boy that threw the sand dollars back in the sea. We can make the difference in this thing. Our tax base will grow, but the future of Starville is being challenged <coughs> by our sister cities of Columbus and West Point. We need to pick up the challenge and move Starkville into the forefront where we belong and develop the economic base, base that Starkville needs for our industrial park. I urge you to vote for the prosperity of, this, of Starkville. I urge you to vote for the better jobs for the citizens of Starkville. And I have urge you to vote for a brighter future for the citizens of Starkville. And I urge you to vote on option one tonight as you vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Childs. Further citizen comments. Hello. Um, I'm going to speak on the industrial park. Kaylin White. Um, how many of y'all have actually ridden out there where the number one will be? You? And did y'all see the condition that the roads and everything, the hills, the lakes were in? Okay, and how many of the business owners that support it have actually ridden out there? And Ms. White, please limit your comments to making comments to the board. Well, that's fine. And then when you've completed your comments, the board members will have an opportunity to respond. Okay, well, how many are actually affected that actually own property that are going to touch this industrial park? None of y'all. Myself and my family. Well, y'all are not going to be affected at all. No one back there is going to be affected except my mother and our family. So you can take that into consideration, as well as the $2.3 million of estimated for the cultural and prehistoric artifacts that will be there. And that's going to be affected by the people that are selling the land as well. Thank you, Ms. White. Did you have a comment? <clears throat> All 
I'm Richard Hilton, Mayor, Alderman Perkins, my, uh, my Alderman, Ward 5, other Alderman, and Alderman Alder Lady. I only wanted that distinction. Appreciate the opportunity to speak to you in support of option one. I want to do it from a little different uh, perspective without being re redundant to the other thoughts that have been shared with you. I want to uh, talk to you about the workforce, the opportunity for the types of jobs that could come with the option one. There are a lot of people in Starkville right now are working in low income jobs or working multiple jobs and with uh, industrial park of the nature of option one can give us the increase in income power would be uh, <clears throat> much better and the opportunities with people to not have to have multiple jobs would be very refreshing and to an improved quality of life for those individuals I think it would be a tremendous opportunity we bypass we may one day look back and say why did we not take that option and have that better capacity with the type of industrial recruitment that uh, can be brought to start. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. Further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? I'm coming forward, Parker. Just give me a little time to come, Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I'm saying, Mayor. I'm Dorothy Isaac, as everybody knows, and I thank y'all for welcoming me back because you know I'll call you in a minute. Scott. <laughs> Okay, I had to point at the one who I, I talked to, I did talk to him, but I did call him. I guess I can see him here. But I would just like to say at this time that uh, while I was in the nursing home, I've been in the nursing home because I had my leg cut off, and I've been in the nursing home, I would just like to say, I don't see no positive great impact yet coming to Starbucks, so I think this will help Starbucks. But I want to see, and I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not liberated at what I say, I say it. And I want to see black people included in some of this stuff. We said, uh, where they at? Are black youth still being locked up? Where are they? When the name came out in the newspaper, I called some of the people from there because I knew, you know, most of the businessmen, most of the everybody would want that because they're supporting their, uh, you know, business. And I know that here in Starkville. But we need more ethics. We need something that's going to come to that side of the town, and I've been talking about it for the longest. I didn't know about the people uh, property that it probably would affect, but I am full. I am. Because this will create more jobs, and I'm finna put the nail to the ground now. I'm out, and I'm finna put the nail to the ground. It's time that we have progress here in Starkville. Not talk about it, and do it, and raise more taxes. And who, who knows? I can't pay taxes right now. I promise you I can't. But you know what? The Lord's gonna make a way. But I still would like to say, consider this. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be down on you. Whatever happened, I'm going to be down on you because now is the time. We need to stop talking. Mississippi State thing, business owners of town thing. We need to put some jobs where they need to be put in. And we keep on saying that everything ain't going to make the jobs. Okay, it's going to be a job. It's going to be a job. Mississippi State can care of this. We know. We've been here. I've been here all my life. And I know they can take care of themselves. But come on, people, let's get together. We're going to do something. It's bad now. This option is good. So far, it's good. I don't know who's going to eat lunch with who. But I tell you what, I'm voting they time that you pay for your own lunch and not use the citizens' money food. You know, and you know what we have for no money. I told you, I'm back. I liked it because there was one person in there that was Mr. Williams, and I was full of support for what he said. But thank God for him. Thank God for y'all. But I'm back now. We're going to quit talking about the job. We got to do it if we're going to make this happen. We need to do it. See about these people's property, make sure we're not overlapping with them. Anything about that, because I got the <coughs> You know, and I want to talk to you tonight. But please, whatever we do. I know my time will fall, don't you hit me? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, Miss <laughs> Okay, but please consider that option. And to the owners, or the business, I would just like to say, remember, we got a community here in Charlotte, and it includes people that look like me and shape like me. Thank you. Thank Welcome you, back. Further Welcome back, Mr. Oak. Further citizen comments. Between two men, my name is Adam Turner, Ward 7. I want to recognize 
our uh, Biden man, Frank, and Alan Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Uh, at Marketplace, we have a problem. People afraid they don't know how far to get in the street for the light to change. We have had several wrecks it because people are afraid to get too far in the road. All right. We need to check that out the same way at Walmart. People are afraid to get out in the street too far because a loose car, somebody can't drive. Or, uh, they, they just like to know how far to get out in the street so that they won't get hit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Seeing none, we'll move to public appearances. And our first public appearance tonight is from Relay for Life. All public appearances, you will have a maximum of 10 minutes to make your presentation. And I ask that you remain for any questions or comments from the members of the board when you have completed your presentation. Good evening, Mayor, Board of Alderman. My name is Caleb Rich. I'm the event lead this year for the Relay for Life of Octavia County. And on behalf of the Relay for Life of Octavia County, I uh, want to request permission for the use of city property, such as light posts and sidewall rails during the week of August 1 through August 5, to affix uh, purple ribbons in promotion of the Relay for Life, which will take place on August 5th. And in addition, we would like to see about get permission to hang a banner over the Washington Street Main Street intersection to promote this as well with everything being removed on the 6th. What, what were your dates again? August 1 through August 5. Okay. Have you visited with the uh, community development staff yet? I, I have been in contact with them back and forth. Uh, spoke with Ms. Carlisle and Mr. Sanders and uh, Ms. Carlisle had suggested to go ahead and come tonight and before the board to make this request before filing for permits or anything for the banner. Okay, so you're asking for uh, permission to place ribbons on city property, and are you asking for a permit fee waiver? No, sir. Uh, just uh, she she said that it would be it would be in my best interest to request permission as far as the banner goes to request permission from the from the board in regards to the banner prior to submitting the application and seat. So you're just asking for permission uh, to uh, place ribbons on city property? Yes, sir. Just in the downtown area. Do I, do I hear a motion? Second. Motion has been made uh, to allow uh, Relay for Life uh, to place uh, ribbons on city property to promote the 2016 Relay for Life campaign. Alderman Little, is that your motion? Do we hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Little, do you wish to speak on the merits? Yes. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please speak up by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please speak up by saying nay. Motion clearly passes. Thank you. Thank you. The next public appearance is by the <coughs> Mississippi Next program. It's a presentation by Dr. Jessica Peck. Is anyone here with the next program? Is there anyone here with the next program? Seeing no one, we'll move to our third public appearance, and that is by the uh, muscular dystrophy representative. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ellie Denman. I am the uh, director for the state of Mississippi for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And I'm here tonight to inform all of you about the great work that the Starkville Fire Department does, not only in their community, but for the Muscular Dystrophy Association every year. Um, we are a nonprofit national organization that supports families who live with neuromuscular diseases in the state of Mississippi. Um, all of the money that we raise around here is for our local families. Um, we have got a fill the boot program that is a 60 year tradition and over 100,000 firefighters participate in this program nationwide every single year. 
We're so happy that Starkville Fire Department is a part of that. Um, last year they were able to raise $3,000, or actually more than $3,000 of the $120,000 that Mississippi Fire Departments raised last year for MBA. Um, so just to tell you briefly about some of these services that we provide, um, one, we provide equipment, medical equipment services for families. Um, we also have an MBA summer camp where children in Mississippi are able to go spend a week with no limitations um, at, at a summer camp because they're not usually able to go to any other camps. Um, and also we have a clinic in Jackson, Mississippi so that all of our families can go get treatment there for free. We also have 250 research grants going right now to find cures for muscle diseases. Um, and so those are some of the services that all of these funds go to provide. And I'm just kind of here to tell you guys about it and let you all know that this is something that the Starkville Fire Department is participating in. Um, we greatly appreciate it and the city support of it. Uh, they are um, also participating in the program this coming Memorial Day weekend at the Kroger in Starkville. So we're really excited about that. Anything? Are there any questions or comments from the members of the board? Any questions or comments from the members of the board? Alden Carl. Chief, you've always been proactive in this cause, and I just appreciate that and everything that you do uh, with the Pink Hills included while we're talking about this type of thing. <coughs> Thank you for your proactiveness. Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Any further questions or comments? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. Our final public appearance is by Cindy Brown with the Golden Triangle Planning and Development uh, District to give an update regarding the Senior Expo. Ms. Brown, you'll have 10 minutes and I ask you to remain for any questions or comments. I just wanted to, uh, Planning and Development District, to uh, personally invite the board and the mayor to the Expo on Monday, May 23rd. I put out the flyers for all y'all. We would really appreciate it if all y'all would come out. We're trying to do something really nice for the uh, ages 52 and up. Uh, it's not just a resource fair. It's going to have bingo, entertainment, photo booth. It's going to be a lot of fun for the uh, boomers and the seniors, and we'd appreciate it if y'all could just, even if you just come in and show your faces, we'd appreciate it. Questions or comments from the members of the board? Alderman Mayor. I I'm excited. I'm old enough to go. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> And I'm going to hold you to that. I expect to see you there. Mm -hmm. Now, we really, we would appreciate it if y'all would come out and support this because this is going to be the first one and hopefully it'll be an annual thing. So we need all the support that we can get because we're trying to do something really, really nice. It's for Older Americans Month, but it's, we changed, we widened the age a little bit to the uh, boomers. So I think most of y'all were probably boomers, maybe. Oh, but Ben Carr. <laughs> so I, I expect to see y'all there. <laughs> oh, I forgot about you. Baby. But, but we appreciate if y'all come out and support us. Any further questions, Any questions? or comments from the members? <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Sorry, Mayor. Thank you, John. <laughs> All right. The next matter before you is discussion and consideration of options for a potential in industrial park and I'll ask the representatives from the link to come forward to uh, make a presentation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Joey Deason's going to hand out a, a handout that uh, we're going to kind of talk about a little tonight. Some of y'all, uh, well, I think, uh, I don't know, weeks ago an opportunity was uh, uh, provided for a briefing at the mill for uh, uh, several options regarding the industrial park. Uh, we invited the city, Oceda, uh, uh county leaders uh, to be there. Uh, we spent a good amount of time uh, going over pros and cons and some of our some of our site selection processes. Uh, we asked that after after that period, we asked that a steering committee be made up of two people from the city, two people from the county, two people from Oceda, and then the two uh, executive committee members from the link, uh, Steve Langston and Michelle Amos would also serve on that and we would kind of work through and, and answer questions. Uh, at that first meeting, it was quite, basically just what I'd consider a housekeeping meeting. We kind of talked about the issues. We talked about some of the pros, some of the cons at length. Probably an a, a hour and a half, two hour meeting, I guess, my recollection is that meeting was. Uh, the second meeting, uh, we brought in the environmental consultants, we brought in the engineers, we brought in the attorneys 
and we said, okay, guys, here are the experts. Uh, here, if you've got issues, concern, don't understand something, this is your time to do that. You know, there's no media in there. You can kind of ask the questions you want to ask and kind of come to the conclusion. Uh, while it was not a unanimous decision by the, uh, uh, by the group, uh, I can tell you that the majority of the, of the group appeared to uh, uh, favor option one, which I call the Strange Stanley Walter property. That was the one that, that, that I think was the preferred. Uh, we are in a, we're in a predicament in that our options are, are soon to expire around the end of July, and we really need to, we need to get some direction, we need to get some movement. Uh, we think we either need to pull the trigger or not pull the trigger, I guess. Uh, we went to the supervisors a few weeks ago, and, 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 and we, we, we've got, got two things that we need, two things that everybody needs to consider, okay? The first one is the gas line. You know, in evaluating the sites for Starkville, for Octavia County, we found out something we did not know, and I think we found out something you did not know, that there is an, a, a shortage of natural gas source uh, for the city. Uh, Atmos gas officials tell us that there's less than 100 MCF available citywide for the city. So uh, uh, as, as we found that out, uh, 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 we had, had planned to include that gas cost in part of the industrial park project and try to identify some funding sources from it. The first steering committee that we had, the discussion kind of leaned towards, well, is this an economic development project or is this a community <laughs> development project? Well, the fact is it's probably both, okay? And what we said was, we're perfect, and I think the leaning was from, from, from some of the leadership there is it's a community development problem. And I think that's okay with us, uh, as long as everybody in the room understands that there's a gas issue, a gas problem, and we've got to fix it, okay? Uh, this budget that's before you does not fix the gas problem. It assumes that somebody is going to own that problem and somebody's going to get that problem corrected sufficient enough that we can do what we want to do. So that's still the elephant in the room. Okay. The other thing that, that, that we're running up against is, is the cultural resources. And we've gone to the landowners and we said, will you adjust your prices uh, accordingly up to $2 million reduction in land costs to help offset the cultural resource work that, that our expert, Walt Dinkelacker, thinks has to be done on this project. We're at a chicken and egg thing here. We're at a Mexican standoff, however you want to say it. Okay. And here's where we are. The landowners are reluctant to lower the cost of their <laughs> property because they don't they don't fully believe that the city and the county are going to pull pull the trigger and do the project. So they don't want to lower the cost of their land because they don't know if y'all are willing to do the deal. Uh, in in various meetings we've had with their representatives, one is in an estate and we're dealing with their with their uh, with their uh, uh, court appointed agent. The other are the landowners that we met personally with Joey and I both uh, have met with. We said, what assurances can we give you? that we're serious about moving forward and doing this project. They didn't know, and, and finally we made the suggestion, we said if the city and the county were to give you, were to pass a notice of intent to issue bonds to do this project, would that suffice as enough of a good faith effort that you would consider lowering your costs and, and amend the option accordingly? They said yes, we think that will pass, okay? We went and we reported that to the Board of Supervisors uh, it was not in was not an executive session. It was an open session, and basically, here's what here's what they told us: We're for option one. It was a 4-0 vote with Ms. Miller abstaining. I think some of y'all know she's got some pro that that option two could have an effect on her property. Uh, so she she noted that she abstained, uh, but 4-0 vote that they they wanted to pursue option one. They wanted to commit seven million dollars of county funds. They have instructed us to prepare a notice of intent to issue bonds for $7 million continue, and, and bring it to them at their next meeting following this meeting, contingent upon the city concurring and agreeing to authorize or, or instruct us to prepare a notice of intent to issue bonds for the same $7 million number, okay? So what that will give us is the budget's in front of you. That will give us uh, the dollars to do the water, the sewer, the land acquisition, uh, the property is shown at its, at, its, at its current option price, and there's no prices shown for the mitigation. We think that will be offset dollar for dollar in a reduction of the price. And then the, uh, the gas line issue uh, still must be dealt with. Um, we, have, we have taken the liberty, and I would certainly want 
your experts to do this for you, but we've taken the liberty of saying the value of a meal is about $220,000 and change in Starkville, about three twenty seven dollars in the county, and that uh, each of your debt service based on 5.25% interest at 20 years, and that's a guesstimate. If it's lower, it's lower. If it's higher, it's higher. I mean, that's all we can do. We think it's a conservative estimate today. Uh, that uh, uh, your note, note payment would be a little over $566,000 a year and result in a, uh, il a millage increase, uh, assuming you don't have the funds in place to make the payment of up to 2.6 million uh, meals in, uh, in the city and about 1.75 meals in the county. And that's kind of where we are uh, to bring this to you for consideration. Uh, we'd like to move forward. I think our recommendation is option one as, ever, as long as everybody understands the two issues. There's some cultural work that will have to be done. We expect the cost will be offset by a, 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 a reduction in cost of purchase of the land. And we would, we would, we would get that agreed to contingent upon uh, y'all doing the, bond, the notice of intent to issue bonds. In other words, we would sit down with the landowners before we bring you back that notice of intent to issue bond and have that, have that agreement in hand. And then the next thing is uh, the gas line and understanding that it probably is a community development issue and, and there needs to be a plan. And both Joey and I and our staff have committed to work with y'all and, and, and help. Mr. Mayor, on, on, the, on the gas issue, how confident are you that um, we could approach Atmos? I would think it's kind of a supply demand issue that they would want to supply it whether there, where there's a demand well there's a short I, shortfall yeah i mean you know to be honest with you mr little i've been doing this almost 30 years i mean i, I don't remember it being in a place that had less than 100 mcf for a citywide surplus capacity i mean that seems to me to be a, a very low am amount of uh, a gas that's available uh, i think they recognize that improvements have to be made and, and, and need to be made uh, most of y'all remember that, that we were working with uh, uh, DPM and they were looking at going to the uh, Cornerstone Park. Uh, uh, in, the, in the fleshing out of this, when we found out it was a problem, and, and again, you know, we had, we had no idea. You know, we knew, there was no, we, we knew there was no rail. We knew there wasn't electricity available, readily available in some places, but we didn't know there wasn't, wasn't very much gas. And we had originally tried to work with the Economic Development Administration using DPM's job creations as a, as a possible uh, 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 way to tie up some money there. Our original budget had some of the county's funds in there paying for the gas line. And we've actually gotten a letter from Atmos stating a willingness to participate in up to $3.5 million of the cost contingent upon there being a customer that would justify the gas usage. So we've got a chicken and egg thing, but I think I think a city the size of Starkville, the important the the, the, the the importance that you have in the in, in the in the state with the you know the major land grant university being here, uh, I think we need to sit down and figure out a way to solve that gas problem. And I, I think you know I think if we could ask for help from our legislatures and others, we can get it solved. Uh, but this is a problem that's going to haunt us anywhere we go. This is not something if we move from this side to the next side to the next side will go away. This is a citywide issue and a citywide problem. Thank you. Further questions or comments from the board for Mr. Higgins? I, 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 Mayor, I, Mayor, I've been remiss and I need to point out something. The uh, Also on here is Four County Electric. You know, we've had electrical uh, issues as far as availability capacity, and I don't mean that there's not electricity here, but at the level that some of these industries might want or need. Uh, certainly at a, at, a, at a disadvantage when it comes to West Point, when it comes to Columbus, uh, or GTR really, not Columbus. Uh, uh, really four counties board of directors have stepped up to the plate. They've agreed to make electrical improvements to allow, allow us to have the ability to, to serve up to 60 megawatts on this park. Uh, they've agreed to pay for that out of pocket. They've agreed to make improvements with TVA and have that uh, available to us. They've agreed that they will make that power available to us within six months of, an, of a company signing a keep hold agreement with them. In other words, a contract to purchase power. Nothing we can do out there could be built, a building could be built quicker than six months. So we're gonna have the basic bones of this done and they will be able to come in, drop those services there and be able to do that. And they have agreed to do that contractually with us so that within six months of, a, of signing of a contra, power contract, they would have the power there contractually. So we're pretty excited about that and we're pretty happy that they had the confidence and faith in us to, to put $4 million on the table. I'm sorry, Mayor. Alderman Carver. I'm going to use this opportunity. I get a lot of questions from constituents and also from the, to the business field while you're here. I thank all of y'all calling. Uh, the <laughs> most calls I've ever received on any one, up, one subject here in town. But um, 
So what I do is I like to take a lot of notes and over the last few, uh, probably two weeks as I get these phone calls and I have the conversations out and about, people ask me and I say, you know what, I may not know the answer to that. So I like to write <coughs> the questions down and I bring that to a public forum. Come on. Come on. Uh, I'm not above any other side options. I remember about two months ago we met at the mill and then this came out and this, to my, the way I understood it that day, it was kind of a gasp in the room like, wow, that's, that's the pie in the sky, that's the elephant. <clears throat> let's talk about uh, the airport project, 16th section, and let's talk about Cornerstone. Why hadn't Cornerstone made? Well, the, no, no. I mean, we, we actually offered the 16th section, uh, 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 Cornerstone making some improvements, and then, and then this option as well. Uh, uh, when we went to the Board of Supervisors, we said, you know, we're, we're, act, we're asking for some direction. We need to know where we need to go. We're, we're, we need some direction. Uh, their preference, uh, as witnessed by that 4 vote, is that they want to go with, with option number one. Uh, option number two is, uh, is a 16th section. It's, it's smaller. Uh, it's got some limitations. Uh, uh, but we, we obviously we offered it up as an option uh, because we think if, if you're if you're not able to willing to or or can find your way to doing the, the bigger project that that le at least Mr. Carver gives you some product right now we don't have any product to sell and we've got to be able when somebody's looking to say hey we got 50 acres 100 acres or something here we don't have any buildings okay we don't have any land so we've got to we got to figure that out, and so the 16th uh, section option was was provided as as, as an alternative, it was lower in cost, and uh, 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 you know I think uh, where I am here is I'm kind of caught between the middle. I mean the county's kind of expressed what their willingness, what what they want to do. I, now I'm I'm before y'all what you want to do. Uh, hopefully you'll come to agreement. Hopefully you'll come to the same agreement. If not, you know then we'll have to sit down and figure out what that looks like. Um, this is going to be a, a question more for the city attorney, and you've seen a letter regarding the FAA situation on the runway protection zone, which basically encompasses the airport property. Does that letter alone have enough legal basis to it to kill that roadway project behind the south side of the runway? Not necessarily, because it leaves open the option of putting that road in a different location that would suffice for the FAA, but it puts the city on notice that where the road is positioned now, the FAA does have problems with that. So if we build it the way it was now, we'd be responsible for almost a $10 million payback on grants that the city's received? We would be arguably in violation of some FAA rules and regulations that govern the airport. Okay. And, 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 I, and I would be remiss, I'm not a lawyer, okay? Uh, but we see this happen all the time. Uh, Nick, Arlet, Nick Ardello tried to stop the uh, steel mill because of the elevation of the steel mill. Uh, we've got a we've got a we've got a letter to the contrary from a different civil engineer uh, that basically says you can build the road now, and the airport when they do their what they're doing will have to take into account that road's location there. I think if you think about it, a lot of places that you've all traveled, there's roads right up to the end of runways. I mean, you've been in cities, you've seen it. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the the answer that I can most tell you is that letter probably was written so it covers the city. By, 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 by telling us that, but, but, the, but the comments that I've gotten from another civil engineering firm is that we could do that and it would probably, in almost every case, not cause us a problem. We haven't done like we did when the steel mill came and brought a $50,000 consultant in and, and, and put it on the line and showed how it could happen because, quite frankly, right now the only site that, that we're looking at is option <coughs> one because that's what the county's told us they want to do. We haven't heard from y'all. If that's the option you want to do, we can spend some legal oil. We can we can we can figure that out. But I don't think it's as dire as it probably has been uh, been portrayed. And if you think about just common sense of where you've been, Shelby Drive in Memphis is right there at the end of the airport. There are a lot of others like that too. Okay, thank you. Um, also. I guess the two red flags for me are probably the natural gas situation, not knowing we had a deficiency. That was the first time I'd heard, like you said, you found some, some information that we probably didn't know ourselves. Um, if there were a, a, a motion presented tonight, I would like to see some kind of contingency basis on the city not being responsible for the $10 million. We don't represent the county, we represent the city, and that's all I can ask for. Um, another, another question with the cultural remains, the mitigation costs. So on here it says, memo, <clears throat> cultural mitigation costs is not above included above and must be offset and accommodated by land cost price uh, reduction. So like on our other site, it was I think about $13 million project and you did your due diligence, we lost that, that, that money as a city. How far are you along in the process or have you identified? What we, 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 uh, 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 we went out there and did some preliminary work. None of, the, none of the maps indicated that there's an issue, but you gotta understand none of these maps have ever looked at this unmapped areas. 
a lot of these areas that are mapped are where the roads are, where where improvements are. So this 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 raw land haven't hasn't been mapped. Uh, we hired Walt to go out there and give us an idea before we got very far into this what we were looking at. Uh, uh, and he came back after about three or four days and said, "You got about the same level of problem uh, that you had at the other one." Okay. This, so this second lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's it, it's on the magnitude of probably a couple of million dollars. And so, you know, what we said is, gosh, could we just go back to square one again? I mean, this is getting kind of like, uh, you know, not fun. And uh, we, 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 uh, we brought the landowners in. We said, look, we just, we've, got a, we, we've got a question to ask you, and if it's, if it's screwy, okay, but, but, but it matters. Uh, and we took each and every landowner's land value that they, were, that they had it under option. And we said, if we were to try to come up with a couple of million dollars of cultural mitigation money, would you be willing to take a reduction in cost of your land up front? Would you be willing? Would you be willing? And we gave them the amount that each and every one of them would do. To the man and woman to this point, none of them have told us no. They've said they would be willing to consider that. And, and so that's how we would get the money. Uh, uh, we would have that commitment from them in hand at a reduced cost. We would, we, y'all us, would use the county and us, we would buy this land. And then we would issue the bonds for, for the amount to do that work. We've given each and every one of the landowners a commitment that if our guy's estimate is high, is, is, is high and it only say, for instance, Mr. Carver, cost a million dollars, that once the cultural was signed off on and once we were green light cleared, we would refund them the balance of their unused money for their land. You get, get the picture. You get it back. If, and at some point, we've got to be willing to take some risk. If at some point that it costs more than that, then that's, that, that's our Catholic. We, we, it's our responsibility. We can't keep going back to them. It's, it's kind of appealing for them in a way because they would, they, the first transaction that would take place is we would purchase the land. We can't go in and do the mitigation on this property without owning the land. Chris Pace says we can't spend city and county resources doing mitigation on properties we don't own. We have to take the land down. So at that point, we're committed, okay? We're not the eggs, we're the ham. We're committed at that point. And so once that happens, then however long that work takes. He thinks it'll take 18 to 24 months. I hope we can get it done quicker than that. And I'm in hopes that we can establish some lots there that are easily developable quickly so that we can go ahead and start marketing. And the picture that I painted to most everybody is, you know, I can see a scenario where the park is complete but we may have a coming soon sign on one lot available today on another because we're still doing a little bit of finish up and work. Uh, but it is going to be a process. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, back to that piece of property. I'm, I know when it was a big, you said I think you'd only seen that project or two in the history of the state of Mississippi stop because of cultural remains from the archaeological side. So if that's the same problem here, why are we pursuing this project if it's, has it, is the archaeological side, archaeological side not stopped this project? Well, be, be, because the owner's willingness to take a reduction in cost of the property. I mean, the last time, we, I, I'm thinking we were at about a $10 million cost total, full in last time, about five and five, best, best I remember, 10. And, 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 and when you started trying to pay $2 million on top of $10 million, it was just nobody had the stomach for it. This, this time, you know, we said, hey, would you reduce the cost of your land? Land's more. Would you reduce the cost of your land to help us offset this cost? And, and, the, and again, I can't swear on a Bible and tell you that the landowners will sign this. I can tell you that we've met with each and every one of them, and they've indicated a willingness once they see a willingness from the city and county. But where we're going to get the money to do it is they're going to reduce the cost of the land. It'd be like you bought the land at full price and didn't have the problem. But the problem is you're going to have a small delay there of the time that it takes to do this work. So in the previous site, I'm just looking because if we're going to, um, what's, what's the advantage to this this site if they both got cultural remains? Over Innovation Park? Um, over the previous site that we declined for the same reason. Yeah, probably this site's larger uh, and, and the, the, com the willingness and commitment of four county to install the electrical improvements up to 60 megawatts. I think we at the last one we were at 12, 14 megawatts, and it was equal, and not equal, the, the service wasn't equally divided, but the geography was equally divided between SED and Fort County Electric. So you had two electrical providers. Probably the site being bigger here, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the availability of a bigger power up to 60 megawatts are pro 
probably probably a, the, two. the two players, yeah. So Fort County's not willing to do the 60 megawatt substation? Well, they don't even serve half of that geography, SED okay. does. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, so that was going to, a lot of the constituents were saying, hey, in the paper, you know, I can read for $225,000, we can be in Cornerstone. So Cornerstone's always going to be limited to 12 megawatts of power. Yeah, yeah. Cornerstone's just got limitations. I mean, yes. it does. I mean, it's, uh, 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 you know, you've got some floodplain issues in there. you got some power issues. Uh, uh, Fort County is going to get us some there in 18, but you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, that, and, 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 and every, everybody needs to remember that's on the board. If you want to do that, it's 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 the low cost. It's the low cost deal. We're just not going to have much power there until 2018, so we're just going to have to make do. So in the next less than, I mean, 24 months, 20 months. That's right. We could get by with 12 megawatts of power and then with 60 coming. Mm. In. No, the, 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 the 60 is up at the, at, the other, at the other park. It would be 12 plus or minus megawatts. You're, you're probably going to, at that point, have enough power to serve the industries that you can locate in Cornerstone. Yes, sir. The, the, the real, realistic 12 megawatts, 14 megawatts, you probably will fill up the park before you would exceed your power or close to it. Okay? But you got to understand there's, there, there, are, there are some limitations. That's just, that's just facts. Okay, thank you. Further questions or comments for Mr. Higgins? Hold on, wait. Before my iPad crashes, <clears throat> I, I, I need to ask, <clears throat> excuse me, Miss Laura White is here, and she has two questions in her email that I'm going to ask you for her. She said, who is going to provide high-speed internet to the facility, and do you have a firm commitment and cost estimate? Well, the, the, the fiber is actually located at, at the intersection of 82 and 389 mm -hmm. there. That corner, that south uh, southeast corner, is where the fiber is located. Uh, we spend this money to build a park. Our indications are from Ceasefire. Uh, that's not a, that's not an unreal extension. I mean, it's not like it's coming halfway across the county. Uh, Joey confirmed uh, this week. Joey, where'd you go? Confirmed this week. It's at, at the sa right. southeast corner of, of 389. And so, for what we do for a living, if it, it's it's it, if it's not on site, it's near site, and that's 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 not a concern for us. Okay, and one other question that she had out of six questions, I'm going to ask this one. She says, has there been any traffic engineering studies in order to confirm sight lines and distances? There have already been fatalities at 389 and 82 exit ramps. Yeah, the, uh, 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 we will be connecting the road to 389. There's a proposed road that goes off of 389 into the park. Uh, obviously, any time we do that, Neil Schaefer's been the engineer working on this. Uh, they've got expertise in working with MDOT uh, pretty extensively. Uh, uh, anything we do and tie into the highways, obviously, going to have to meet MDOT's requirements and standards. And uh, and it's my my, my assumption that uh, uh, Neil Schaefer knows what those are, and that and that that the uh, appropriate uh, design will be taking place. Uh, obviously, we'll have to get MDOT approval at some point. So uh, if those issues are out there and concern. You know, we'll note them. I will tell you this: that with the min the impact of traffic, we expect to be minimal because, you know, when you come off of Highway 389 going north, you're not going to go very far before you turn and go into the park. So we're going to limit the the majority of the truck inbound and outbound truck and and, and cars going in are going to happen right there, right there, uh, right off 82. I don't think I don't think you're going to see much traffic north of 389, and I think uh, most of the traffic's going to be coming on the main corridor 82, 12. Further questions from the members of the board? Any further questions for Mr. Higgins? Uh, th thank you again for the, the presentations. Is, uh, well, it's a little different every time, but it's the uh, same, same sort of information. But you understand, so, what we're understand what's going points. on. And uh, I think, I don't think there's any question that Starville is poised for some new industrial development. Uh, I've had a lot of hesitation uh, for option one. Uh, the money is an issue, but that's not the, the only issue for me. Uh, option, looking at the two options, options one and options two and three sort of in concert together, when, when I look at those, uh, option one, bigger piece of property um, on the bypass, whereas the other is not necessarily on the bypass, neither have rail, neither have gas. <coughs> um, both are going to have ultimately adequate power uh, to service the size of those two parks, that's, that's you, you agree, agree, agree with that. Um, so you're going to have power to, to look at those two. One, uh, yes, maybe gives us a, a little bit better chance, perhaps, to, to get a larger manufacturer in there in the larger park. 
The other has an opportunity to, to, for me, build out some of our existing infrastructure and help uh, our existing industrial base try to be to, to become strong. Excuse me, to be stronger there. I think those are, uh, to me, two positive things to, to weigh. Um, and then when you factor in all the other things that you know, whether it's community development, looking at trying to find a way to do gas or other issues in town that uh, that we've alluded to, whether it's the city hall or a uh, police station or other things that we have to do is trying to find a way to balance all real issues that we know that we that we clearly have and looking at that you know, question one how is how how are you how do you approach if we were to go with option one or if we went with option two tonight option two and three in some combination how does that change the links perspective in terms of how you market those two sites and what you do for Starville and Octavia Camp well Again, a whole bunch of questions in there. Okay, so so, so keep me on point. But 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 the fir first one is, if we're going if we're going to put the city and the county together as partners in this, y'all have to come to an agreement together about which solution you want to do. Okay, that's that's very problematic for us if one prefers one and one prefers the other. Okay, which one of your children do you love the most? Well, you love them both the same. Okay, but but we need some direction. Okay. Uh, uh, on, on what that what that looks like. I mean, we really do. Uh, we would not have proposed the 16th section option and the, the waiting and doing it at Cornerstone as an option if we didn't think that that was that was something that would at least get you in the game. You know, it's not as good as one. I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, I would rather this gas line problem wouldn't have happened. I mean, I can't imagine a town of 25, 3, 5 thousand people. Uh, having less than 100 MCF of gas citywide. I mean, that's just to me. That's how's that? How's that happen? I caught myself, Mayor. How's that happen? Okay. So we got to figure that out. Uh, um, but but we need some direction from you, and we need some direction from the county. And you need to get together and be on the same side somehow. Uh, you know, we've been asked. Well, what if the city and the county can't get together? You know, we we've been asked to to run scenarios of. You know, everybody doing their own thing. We've been asked to resurrect some of the sites that were in the county just because for consideration of what those might look like. Uh, you know, it's, uh, 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 we're, you know, I mean, with respect, we're getting kind of tired of guessing. We need some direction and we want to move forward. And, uh, and here's the thing about it. If we do this, guys, we got to be all in, okay? We got to be all in. In other words, if we commit to do this, we got to understand our challenges. We got to understand what's in front of us. We got to understand what we got to do to succeed. And every little thing that might not go so-so either way, we just got to realize that's a bump in the road, and we got to get over it. We can't make. We can't just say, "Oh, look, 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 look here." Uh, I think if it takes 18 months to get the, the cultural resources dealt with, then we need to set as a goal to have a plan to get the gas line dealt with, the gas problem dealt with in the same 18 months. And there should be progress reports and there should be accountability and somebody should own that project. And if it's not being done, we run the risk of getting a park built that has no gas. And what's the difference in that in a park built that has no electricity, right? Can I ask you, I want to tell you on the well, gas. I got, I got Maynard next. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just a quick question on the, on the gas, it's a hot topic. Yeah. Are there a lot of manufacturing companies that come in that require basically the electricity side don't use a lot of gas some yeah, or, some. Or, or is it a 50, some 50 you know half it, half it, deal? It, it ranges i mean you know, the type some will use all right so 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 let me let me tell you a classic project that we recently worked that would work for option one okay it did not need rail okay it was it was a german company owned by the benz family the daimler family okay it was a fiberglass company they made fiberglass for the automotive industry and for the aerospace industry. Now, that might not seem sexy, but it was about a $90, $100 million project. Okay? Worked about 450 people and paid about $45,000 a year. It was announced at Dublin, Georgia in the last two or three or four months. It's real. Okay? That project had an oven that cooked the fiberglass, and it was actually an electric and gas-fired oven jointly. Okay? That oven had to stay at a certain temperature all the time. Gas and electricity ran it. It was a pretty good electricity user. Certainly your 60 megawatts would have been more, more than sufficient to do it, and it needed the gas, okay? That's, that's an extreme one, but that's a real one, and that's one that could have gone to this park it, it, had it existed at the time. Some of the companies just use it for heat, 
Most of y'all have been in a manufacturing plant and seen the big heaters that hang down. Sometimes when it's cold, the elect those electrical units just can't heat up a 100, 200, 300,000 square foot plant. But those fan force gas heaters can. Uh, it doesn't take much gas load like that to, to, eat up, to eat up what we've got. Any facilities that get built, none of the apartments that are getting built here have gas. First of all, it's probably pretty smart. I wouldn't want two, three, four hundred college students living in an apartment with all of them having natural gas. My daughter lives over here. I don't think I'd want that. But bigger buildings, bigger retail buildings, bigger university buildings and stuff like that undoubtedly probably will or need to have gas as a capacity. So it's an issue. And is it a deal stopper? We can't build a park like this with the gas issue not resolved. We just put our all of our we put all of our sales at too much risk. Okay, we can't do that. We've got to solve the gas problem. I believe the gas problem solved. I really do. I think it just takes a few folks sitting down with a plan and the right people and sitting and talking to them and getting it done. Alderman Mayor. Mr. Higgins, how long have you been doing this? Not tonight, in the whole life. 1987, how long that is? About right at 30 years, is that right? Is that close? Right. Huh? Close. Close. I, I was in a meeting presentation last week, and the, the individual that was presenting with me described you as being one of the best, if not the best, economic development officer in the state of Mississippi. I don't know if I necessarily agree, but I, yeah, I, I shook I my head. I, yeah, honestly, I, I shook my head. Most days I don't know if I agree. Okay. You've been very successful in the Golden Triangle, without a doubt. I think everybody sitting in this room would agree with that. In your professional opinion, if you're sitting where we are, why is option one the best? Option one is the best because it gives you the most land. It's probably as close as we're getting. And, and again, we could get more acres. It's just a cost. It's just a fact, fact, factor of money. But we, it gives us a bigger side. It gives us a, a side as close to that one that Bill Free said we should get at 500 acres. Okay. Uh, the, the 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 game changer is is four counties stepping up to the plate with that 60 megawatts. Guys, that's real. That's a that's a four million. So you know, that's a substation we built for Pat Carr and and the north half of GTR, Global Industrial Aerospace Park. That's, that's the same. They asked us, what do you want? And I said, I want that station right there. And they said, okay. And I about, Joey and I about fell out, okay? But the power and the site size, I really, really like the geography of it. I mean, you know, we're proposing this. This has a million and 1.5, I'm sorry, a half a million gallon or 1.5 million dollar water tank on that site, okay? And it's not there for a commercial. It's there to provide redundant, reliable fire flow for industry. But you put a half a million gallon water tank there, you're going to be able to see it coming from the west, coming from the east, and coming from the south. It's going to be our shingle hung out there that says, here we are. It's not in town proper, so you can get in and out. Now, that's not saying those vehicles might not need to come in. People going to work, that, you got to deal with that. But the trucks coming in and out of that, pretty quickly can get on that 8212 corridor and, and get gone. Get where they're going or get where they're coming from to the site. Uh, geographically, it's, it's a pretty site. <clears throat> some rolling hills. Uh, we've got some streams and issues that we've obviously got to work around. And I think Neil Schaefer has done a good job laying the lots out. We've got a, we got a suite of teen acre lots in the teens. We got an, a suite of 20 acre lots. And then we got that standalone water property that we're kind of ho holding as a standalone site. It's now on about 150 acres standalone site. We've never had anything like that here, ever. Okay? Now, I can't guarantee you that we're going to succeed. I never can. I mean, it, it's just you can't do that. This business is too hard. But, but what we think we can do is if we get this thing put together and everybody pushes, is that we put ourselves in a position to win. We're not in a position to win right now. You shouldn't expect to win because we can't. we got to do something to get us in a position to win. And, 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 and I'm going to borrow you, uh, Mr. Walker. I, I, I can't remember how you said it, but it's, it's a risk-reward business, something to that effect in our steering committee. It is a risk-reward. Those that take the bigger chance tend to win the bigger deal, okay? Now, you've all taxpayer stewards, so you've got to take that into consideration. You can't let your eyes be too big for your stomach. But, but, but how, much can you, how much can you afford to take on for future benefit? I'll tell you this, and I know you're tired of listening to me. Tommy Lott is a prominent accountant. Uh, he owns T. Lott. They got an office here. They got an office in, 
in Tuscaloosa. They got an office in Starkville. Got an office here downtown. He was part of the group that put together the Golden Triangle Park out there by by by, by the airport. And he told me for years his friends ridiculed killed him. They paid three hundred dollars an acre for the land. They got an EDA loan grant, fifty fifty two million dollar uh, total project, borrowed a million and 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 got a half a million in grant. <clears throat> he said his friends ridiculed him. Well, that 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 piece of property formed the cornerstone that is now billions of dollars of investment and and and, and, and hundreds and thousands of jobs paying a lot of money. Okay, uh, he they took a risk and it paid off, okay? Now, I can't guarantee you that the same thing is gonna happen for y'all, but I can tell you if we don't do anything, we're not gonna get anything, <laughs> just simple. All Mayor, right, I'm, I'm gonna move, move us into discussion. Uh, let, let me make some comments before I open the floor uh, for discussion on the matter, because uh, I, I, I wanna share my opinions on this, and, and my opinions are pretty complicated, uh, so. Let me, uh, let me give a shout. One, one thing we haven't talked a lot about tonight that I, I think needs to be discussed is I think we need to put in context why we're doing all of this. Uh, and for me, it comes back to knowing where you're strong and knowing where you're weak. Uh, and we've got a lot of strength in this community right now. Uh, th this is a, uh, an economy that is heating up uh, and, and showing some vibrant shifts in places. Uh, you look at our unemployment rate, the uh, uh, latest figure from the D Department of Employment Security is we're, we're down 4.9%. Uh, now, economists characterize 4% as full employment. Uh, so we are getting pretty close to being able to say that uh, everybody that's seriously looking for a job in this community has one. Uh, in addition to that, uh, 2010 census numbers uh, for Octavall County, this is one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Mississippi. People want to be here. Uh, and for anybody with eyes to see, we're in the midst of a construction boom. Uh, over the last two years, uh, we've permitted over $100 million uh, in, in new construction. Uh, so this is a vibrant economy, and there are some things that we definitely do well and are getting better. Uh, but I think we also need to understand where we're weak. And where we are weak is we are well below the state average in terms of the average wage in this community. Yeah. We are well above the state average in terms of the poverty rate in this community. Yeah. Now what all of that is telling us together is just about everybody that's seriously looking for a job in this community has one. Yeah. And still, over a third of our population yeah, can't make ends meet uh, at the end of each month. Uh, that, that is a weakness. Uh, and it's not only really, really discouraging for all of the people that are working hard at a job uh, and are still living in poverty, but it is something that limits everything that we want to do and everything that we want to be as a community. Yeah. So that's why we spend so much time and energy talking about industrial development. Uh, because typically when you bring in new industry, you're bringing in high paying jobs uh, to the community. Yeah? And that, that is something that we desperately need uh, in this community. Yeah? So it's important. Uh, and I think everybody in here agrees it's important. That's why you've invested what you have uh, in the partnership with the link over the last three years. Uh, but before making a really, really big decision, I just think it bears uh, 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 having some discussion uh, uh, about why this is a big deal. Uh, now, let, let, let me get to the complicated part, uh, and that is my personal feelings. Uh, as one of the two people that you appointed uh, to uh, serve on the steering committee uh, from the city, uh, I have uh, <coughs> worked with this issue a lot over the last month. Uh, and I will tell you uh, uh, the, the sentiments I have expressed, and quite frankly, the way I still feel is I like option number two the best. Uh, as I line up the pros and cons that Alderman Walker uh, went through, uh, you know, it's clear uh, that I think in any estimation it's a pretty close call and, and reasonable minds can disagree. Uh, on one hand, you, you've got the larger site with superior highway access, abundant electricity, uh, and, and a higher ceiling on what it can do. Uh, but you've got the two major issues of uh, lack of any gas uh, and uh, also the possibility for costs to escalate uh, with uh, 
the unknowns uh, surrounding the cultural remains on the site. Uh, the other site on the 16th section property, yeah, you've got potential wetlands issues. Uh, you've also got issues that have to be worked out with the FAA on the access road. Uh, you've got a, a, a smaller site uh, with, with a lower ceiling. Yeah. What you also have though, and, and quite frankly, the, the, the factors that, that swing that site in my mind uh, the most are the fact that it costs significantly less and also that you're uh, providing significant in infrastructure to existing industry as well as potential new industry. Uh, and uh, finally, the land you purchase uh, is from the school, so you're adding resources to the school. Now, that was my analysis of all of it. Uh, I have spent the last month uh, shouting that from the rooftops to anybody that would listen to me. Uh, and I have gotten almost no traction whatsoever. Uh, I think Alderman Walker probably agreed with me, but I think he probably agreed with me coming into it. So I don't even think I swung uh, his support on it. Uh, so since then, I, I, I've talked to supervisors, uh, talked to all the stakeholders on the steering committee. Uh, I've talked to the partnership board, uh, the, 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 the business community leadership in the community, uh, and uh, the board of supervisors has voted unanimously uh, for option number one. Uh, the steering committee, everybody but Alderman Walker and I uh, liked option number one. And uh, the most recent thing that happened uh, really, really uh, complicates uh, my outlook on all of this. And that is, I have seen a groundswell of support and optimism from the business community leaders at large, uh, like, like I've never seen before here. And I firmly believe that um, we are in the midst of uh, tremendous momentum as a community. Uh, you, you, you can feel it, uh, but everybody is excited about progress uh, and, and wants to move forward. Uh, and we've got the business community uh, who are some of the highest taxpayers in the community uh, recognizing the full tax implications of all of this, uh, saying it is critical uh, to make progress in this area where we really, really need to make progress. And we think it's so critical uh, that we want you to support the option uh, that, that's going to cost more tax money. Yeah. Now, ultimately, that matters a lot to me. And not just from a political pressure standpoint, but from the standpoint of trying to figure out how we sustain momentum and continue to push ourselves to higher and higher heights in this community. Yeah. We want to keep that fire burning. And I am really, really concerned, even if I was successful in convincing y'all that we should go with option two, that if we do that after the business community in mass has gone out on a limb big time. The business community leaders, they, they like to do business with everybody, so they don't like to typically make controversial stands on local government issues. Uh, but they've done it in this case. Uh, and I have big concerns about the long-term effect of leaving them standing on that lid. Uh, so that being said, now, I'm, I'm going to recommend a course of action tonight. Uh, that is, uh, I, I recommend that we consider option one first. Uh, and all things considered, I, I think we should adopt option one. Uh, and I, I, I think if we don't adopt option one, uh, then uh, you know, there there, 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 there are some long-term implications uh, uh, about the traje trajectory of our momentum uh, that would concern me. But if there's not a majority that will support option one, I think it is imperative uh, that whether it's option two or whether it's a smaller dollar amount than the $7 million, uh, we put forth some good faith effort of what we're com willing to commit uh, to this effort. Uh, because every other piece of the community that has to weigh in on this issue has weighed in on it and everybody's waiting for us to say how we'd like to make progress so I think it's imperative that we don't drop that ball and uh, leave the community in a lurch yeah. so those are my feelings I hope I didn't complicate it more in, in the analysis of all the mayor mayor I move the city accept approve and adopt option number one is presented by the link for 
future industrial park, which includes 384 continuous acres of land located at the intersection of highways 82 and 389, and is also known as the Strange Waldrop Stanley Properties, that the city pledges $7 million toward the project to be funded by issuing general obligation bonds and that the city's bond council provide a resolution noticing the intent to issue such bonds at the next available meeting of the Starfield Board of Aldermen or as soon as possible thereafter. Alderman Maynard has made a motion which has been reduced to writing and has placed that motion with the city clerk. Therefore, without objection, I will not ask for it to be reread. Do I hear an objection? Saying none. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Little. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the marriage? No. Discussion. No. All right, I've got Little, then Carver. I'd like to thank everybody from the business community showing up tonight and, and those that were uh, speaking in favor either way. Um, I think many times we've caught ourselves asking the question, you know, what are they doing right over in Lowndes County? I'm sure most of you guys out there have asked, and I've asked myself <coughs> that a few years ago, what are they doing right? What are we doing wrong over here? Well, um, the leadership over there in Lowndes County, many years ago, 20 years or so ago, made the decision to invest in industrial development, and they've reaped the benefits of it, and are now reaping the millage for the you know returns on their schools in the county, and uh, don't have so many of the um, woes that we've got for not being able to fix the streets and potholes and infrastructure issues that are aging. And we've got the, a huge toll and drainage uh, drain on our. Uh, infrastructure now because we have just such an influx of people fortunately with Mississippi State and the success we've had in the athletics recently and the growth they've uh, encountered out there we've just got a lot more folks using our streets and roadways and, and uh, infrastructure and uh, we've got to be able to maintain that and I think this is one one of the ways that we get there um, back in the 80s a prior uh, board set at the old city hall and made a decision to, to, to work with the university on the research part. They had a vision to, um, to t go out and take a chance and make that investment. And there were probably some back then scratching their heads wondering what are they doing? Is it now at capacity? And I think about 1,700 people employed out there, I believe, making you know good salaries. Um, they took that chance and that leap of faith and it paid off. And I think that's kind of where we're at tonight. We're at a crossroad. Do we ma maintain the status quo and just keep trudging, trudging through and hope something happens and, and, and continue to rely on the success or failures of Mississippi State? Um, they are an economic engine. Fortunately, we have them. We've got something here in Octavia Hall County in the city of Starkville that Clay County does not have. Lowndes County does not have. They never will have Mississippi State University. We can work. Uh, um, with them and, and develop this park and have, a, have something really good that's going to benefit all of our citizens here. Um, I believe this is probably the biggest decision that this board has faced since I've been sitting here the last three years. Um, tonight's going, we're going to define the future of our city. There's always some uncertainty. You mentioned that a, a minute ago, Joe Max. Um, but one thing is certain. If we don't do anything, we're not going to yield anything. That's a guarantee. We must focus on our future. We can't be short-sighted. This is not a short-term plan. We're not going to get the ox out of the ditch in 24 months. But hopefully, down the road, our kids, grandkids, will be uh, reaping the benefits of this. Um, we can't continue to rely on the organic growth of sales tax and ad valorem tax. We've been fortunate in that area over the years. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a viable option. One, three, four win season, with Mississippi State has a huge economic economic impact on the businesses here. Ask any business person, and they will tell you that the impact it makes. We can't rely on that sales tax because, you know, hopefully it won't happen. But if it did, it could have a huge impact on us. Um, <coughs> the industry is going to help expand our, sale, our, our our tax base while providing jobs to our local residents. Our school system is going to benefit greatly. There are no, there not going to be any abatements offered. They get the uh, impact immediately, and hopefully at some point, they will be able to dial back some of the millage that's been uh, so tough on our residents here in the county, too, I would hope. Um, we've been fortunate to keep a low millage in the city. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of truth in that old quote, 
A rising tide lifts all boats, and I see that opportunity here. Anytime a sales, uh, anytime a tax increase is involved, it makes any decision sitting here a whole lot tougher, and it's not something that I take lightly. I've heard from uh, the United Business Community in favor and support of the option one. Those folks are the ones that pay the lion's share of the taxes in the city, and they're supportive of it. Um, and I think it's great that everyone has been so united. I've had a few calls asking, probably about four calls, asking why the city has to pay twice. Well, the city doesn't have to pay twice if they move it out in the county, but we don't reap any of those ad valorem sales tax, or ad valorem taxes because those a million dollar facility, lo facility located here in the city with $25 million worth of equipment, it's gonna be like 12 academy sports. That's the way we've gotta look at it. Well, if, we're not, if we don't have any skin in the game, they can take it out in the county and we're never gonna get those ad valorem taxes. Something to think about. This goes to show everyone that we, the city of Start, we can do great things together when we're united, when we stand together, and we need to send that message tonight as a board. I believe option one is the route that we should go, and I plan to vote in favor, as you know, I second it. You got ahead of me on the, uh, your motion, Alderman Maynard. Um, as my colleague Alderman Walker said, the last time y'all came for Innovation District, you can't catch, catch a fish without bait, and Mr. Deason's been fishing without bait for some time now, and we need to give him something to fish with. Thank you, I'll give the floor. Further discussion, Alderman Wade. Okay, thank you. Wait, I, I, I'm sorry, I he skipped yield, he, He's going to let me go first. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mr. Joe Mack, I'm going to let Buddy Sanders come to the front in just a minute. But come on, Buddy, to the front. And before I allow Buddy to speak, let me say this to you. Thank you so much for your kindness tonight. You didn't come in here screaming at us tonight. And we were all glued to you and listening because this is a big decision tonight that we're going to have. I just had to tell you. You know, the rest of them won't tell you. So I just want to say I thank you so much for that. Okay? Buddy, will you uh, step aside just for me for a moment, Mr. Joe Mack? Just a moment. Buddy, I won't ask you anything that you don't know the answer to and that I don't know the answer to. Will you state to me, under the tenure of this board, what is the amount of new development that has occurred here in Star? Given just a hair under $200 million. Pardon me? Just a hair under $200 million. Just a hair under $2 million. Thank you so much. Two hundred, two hundred million dollars. Thank you so much, Mr. Sanders. Thank you. Okay, remember that Mr. Sanders told all of us that. First, I want to begin by apologizing to so many of you who contacted me regarding the potential industrial park. I was not able to meet with you, with many of you, as I was, I was out of state with my son who was being commissioned for our state. Once returning, I have been actively working on our city-related matters. I have explored every component of this potential development cost, location, tax increase, what it could do for our school system, potential jobs, and the economical aspect and the future for our city. As an alderman for our city, I'm concerned about the tax burden that will be incurred twice by our city residents and property owners. They will pay this tax twice, city and county. I'm also concerned about the present landscape ordinance and the impact it may have on the recruitment of industry to this proposed industrial development if it's approved. I clearly understand an investment versus an expense. This potential industrial park presents both. You just hold on to your seat, man. I would be remiss if I didn't speak on me as an elected official for our city and my feelings about Mr. Joe Mac Higgins of the link. I want to assure each of you that my personal feelings regarding Mr. Higgins did not play any role at how I arrived at my decision. It's apparent that as an elected official, our relationship with Mr. Higgins is strained because of his actions and statements about the eight of us. I wish our city the absolute best as we continue to move forward with the affairs of our city. Earlier, Mr. Sanders spoke on the approximately 200 million of new development under the tenure of this board. It's an enormous amount. There are a total of seven members that vote on the affairs of our city. Our visions may differ, but what I do know is that the seven of us want what's best for the city we represent and call home. Again, I want to assure you that my vote will reflect what is in the best interest of our city. Additionally, I'm, I want to say I'm elated to serve on a board that has created $2 million in new development for our city. 
our city has never experienced the growth of this magnitude prior to the leadership of the eight elected city officials before you this evening. Mr. Mayor, I yield the floor. Alderman Carr. <clears throat> These will be my concluding comments, but I'd say that the timing probably couldn't be worse than this. Our biggest, our biggest problem in the city of Starkville was we're trying to grow and we're having to learn how to grow and where we want to go. Um, fresh on our minds of the tax uh, increases that we had last meeting with the police department, this city hall, uh, possible tax increases with the master parks plan or what entails with that, um, all of the other funding issues that we have as a city. So with the timing being the worst thing, I thought it was pretty, as, as Alderman Little spoke to the fact, I thought it was uh, pretty cool in, in, a, in layman terms to see the business community come out and call, and, and they did call, I'll say that. But it, it stuck out to me because the ones who probably pay the most in this situation, maybe more than an average taxpayer like me, would be the ones who were promoting such a, a tax increase. And I think that they recognize the return on investment that uh, I, still, I still think that we can recognize that as well, and I can recognize it as, my, as a, myself. Several individuals, I don't have to call their name because I look to them as friends, but probably more than friends as uh, probably business leaders and things they've done. One was Dan Moreland, who's a personal friend of mine, and also Rudy Johnson. And for, two, for those two men to step out and put their name on, meant a lot to me as far as I can maybe trust them and, and uh, you know, being just a close acquaintance or a business leader that I look to things that they've done in their life. So for the two of those gentlemen and all these other business leaders to come out and through the 150, 200 phone calls to try to, to, try to explain to me job creation, uh, I thank you for the time that you've given us. Um, I know it's difficult trying to explain some of this. I've learned a lot about power. I've learned about, a lot about natural gas. I've learned a lot about economic return on investment. Uh, and so, <clears throat> you know, I was gonna say, end with this. When I was at East Mississippi, uh, Bill Baldwin used to say, any plan is better than no plan at all. And we struggled with that sometimes. And, and we were talking about growth of the baseball program, but he, he said that and it was like, you know, is it true? Is any plan better than no plan at all? And I think that speaks volumes here tonight. That's a quote I'll bring with me. Uh, the last thing I've closed, the figures as far as, we've heard a lot of people bounce figures around and I've seen them in the paper uh, several times, but it it's, needs to be stated for public record. Is it gonna be for every 100,000 of assessed property value, if you're a city resident, you'll pay $44 a year? Is that correct, Mayor? Is it $44 a year for every 100000 of assessed value that a city if, resident has? If, if you use the Lynx numbers, now I, I will tell you the, I think the Lynx numbers are beyond conservative. Uh, a 5.25% interest rate, unless something changes dramatically in the bond market, uh, you, you're, you're going to have an interest rate that's much lower than that. Uh, for example, most of the bonds that we've issued over the last two years uh, have been uh, at, at between 3 and 4%. Uh, so I will be shocked uh, if these bonds issue for anything over 4%. But yes, if you use that number, uh, that, then it would be $44. I, I think it'll end up being less, probably. Okay, thank you. I yield the floor. I'll say one more thing if I've got, still got the floor. The only other thing I, I don't feel comfortable with tonight is the natural gas situation. The cultural remains, I can, I can digest that because you really have no estimated cost. But natural gas, I think in that field, they should be able to pretty much tell you down to the penny if they measure linear feet, how much it costs to bring that in. $10 million. How many? $10 okay, million. Okay, and I, my, my heartburn with this is left is, again, to have some kind of addendum to the, to the motion that says that the city's not gonna be responsible for that or something that, you know, I don't want the city to be on the hook for $10 million if uh, if the gas company pulls out or something, you know, so. Didn't you say earlier, I'm excuse me, I'm going to uh, Didn't you say earlier that Atmos has already pledged 3.5? Contingent upon a customer being there, they've got a fund that they can tap. Customer that uses natural gas, they, they, we've got a letter from them saying that they would be willing to pay up to $3.5 million towards that cost, assuming they meet certain criteria. They're not, they're not, on their, they're reasonable criteria. The problem is it's a $10 million project, so you gotta figure out where the balance is coming from. And that's okay. when we need that time to get public service commissioner and well, some of the representatives the, in that's, that's, on the game. And there, there's your answers. I mean, okay. I mean, I mean you, you, you need to sit down with the right people. You know, a few years ago, Mr. Ellis was chairman of utilities. I think he probably still has got some sway down there. I think, I think you sat down with a few folks like that and said, we've got a problem, help us fix it. Exactly. And you don't have to fix it today. 
It's just got to be fixed 18 months to 24 months from now. It needs to be fixed. And I think you can do it. I think y'all I think y'all got the horsepower. I think you know the people. I think you can get it done. And I think we can help you do it. But you need to go into this eyes wide open. That that's an, and look, that's that's an issue on 16 sections just as much. It's an issue at Cornerstone just as much. This is a city-wide problem. The solution, the gas line that serves the city is a six-inch gas line that comes from, from, from the east, comes from GTR into town. The solution Atmos Gas says is to tap the Hexas Eastern line at Phoebe. Y'all know, I mean, know where that is. Phoebe and bring it down 389. There is an option to bring it 82, but probably 389 <coughs> into, the, into the park. And once we get to that point, it's just a bore under the road to start integrating it into the city system. You know, that's doable. But, but we've got to figure out a way. You got, to, you got to have a burden hand. You got to have somebody come in to leverage that three and a half, and that three and a half doesn't get it all. Further discussion. Any further discussion? Mayor, For if you will, will you start the vote off um, with Alderman Mayor first and go backwards? No, I'm going to start one and go to seven. That's fine. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none. Please respond by saying yay, nay, or abstain when the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Wynn. Yay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Nay. Alderman Maynard. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. By a vote of five in favor with two against, the motion passes. The next matter on the agenda is the. It's mine. Well, I've got to sort through the consent agenda here. Yes, it is. Uh, the consideration of the. Keep the building in the next day. Consideration of the Keep Circle, uh, beautiful committee, city staff appointments, purpose, bylaw, structure, authorization to advertise for letters of interest. Can we take a break? Yeah, let's get through this one. And then okay. Take a break. Okay. Discussion. I, I just would like to explain what that three thousand dollars that you're going for <laughs> going to get us. I think that's the due. Uh, is that annually? Yeah. If you look at the list of communities that are uh, certified Keep Mississippi Beautiful committee, communities, it's really embarrassing that we're not on that list. And I'll tell you where this all started was I had the Keep Mississippi Beautiful uh, staff representatives come uh, to my office a couple of years ago and point out just how embarrassing it was that we weren't on the list. Uh, so I. I think it's a good program in that it provides you, uh, much like Main Street provides you with um, uh, the standard programs that improve your downtown, this provides you with standard programs that enhance beautification. But I'll be absolutely honest with you, uh, I, I don't want to be uh, the community community that is shockingly not on the Keep Mississippi Beautiful uh, list. Uh, so that's the reason I, I, I've asked uh, Ms. Gandy to pursue this. So all right, motion has been made by Alderman Maynard uh, to approve of the Keep Starkville Beautiful Committee city staff uh, appointments, purpose, bylaws, structure, authorization to advertise for letters of interest, and for appointments to the uh, committee and payment of one time certification fee of $3,000 as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Walker. Alderman Maynard, you wish to speak on the mayor? Yes, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. By a vote of five in favor, with one against, and I have Perkins against, uh, this motion passes. And without objection, I'll move us into brief recess. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Stand in brief recess. Well, see if there's enough crack for there. I doubt there is. <laughs> yeah, explain this in more detail, uh, but uh, the long and the short of it is this is a, a technical amendment uh, to the tax increment financing bond uh, resolution. It does not change any of the financial obligations uh, uh, that, that you will have. Uh, 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 essentially, uh, the bond council and our financial advisor uh, 
in getting the bonds to market uh, that need to be able to set up a reserve fund to pay certain costs on the uh, 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 TIF bonds and uh, bond council does not feel uh, the language of the original resolution uh, uh, fully empowers us to do that. Uh, City Attorney, would you like to supplement? That is a good setup. Um, this relates to the Mark Nicholas TIF section and our financial advisor, Demery Grubbs, has those bonds out on the market for sale and he's engaged a potential purchaser uh, and that purchaser as an express prerequisite for buying the bonds wants the city to set up a reserve fund and I had to be somewhat educated on what that was and the way that works is uh, every year there will be a, an amount of proceeds from the bonds that would cover the principal and interest payments for that year if the tax increments were to fall short. So it gives the buyer some security, frankly it gives the city some security and as those uh, reserve funds accumulate year after year after year, there's a chance that, a very real chance that you pay off the bonds early based on that. So basically this is an is what it is. The buyer says they're not going to do it until you guys do this. And so this just amends the documents to set up a reserve fund. So can you explain a little bit about the reserve fund in terms of how that, just from a function standpoint? The way I understand it, and I may have to rely on the city clerk, is that when the bond proceeds come in, that an amount is reserved right off the top Out of that. to cover okay. the principal and interest payments for that year. And then you go from year to year just like that, to where if the so increments don't cover it, okay. you're covered with that bond. Okay, that was my, my question was, is it something that we have to allocate for separately at budget season, yeah. but this comes directly out of the bond? Correct. It okay. rolls right into this fund. Okay. So in my mind, the, the matter is right for a motion to approve so the moved. resolution. Motion has been made by Alderman Walker to approve of a resolution amending and supplementing the resolution authorizing and directing the issuance of tax increment financing revenue bond series 2016 of the city of Starkville, Mississippi in the maximum principal amount of $4 million allocated for, to the TIF portion out of the authorized amount of $8,500,000 for the TIF district adopted February 16, 2016 to make certain amendments pertaining to the establishment of a reserve fund and provide that the reserve fund may be initially funded with proceeds of said bonds and for related purposes as presented. Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. The motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion saying none? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. By a vote of uh, five in favor with one against, and I have Perkins against, the motion passes. The next matter on the agenda is a discussion and consideration to give community. No, I was just going to, if you read this one, I'll. You want to go ahead and make it? Sure. Uh, what this one is, and uh, Buddy can answer any questions at, 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 at he sees fit. Um, but as, as you've noticed on Russell Street, University Drive, we're getting more and more of uh, the, the large apartment complexes. And uh, while we certainly want those things, uh, you've also noticed on the last two, we've put in some criteria for there to be the first floor, some level of commercial, not just residential, but retail on that University Drive, Russell Street corridor. This uh, amendment to, to that zoning is going to basically put that measure in place is going to uh, uh, allow for some level of commercial to be a requirement in those zones so we're not having to deal with it with conditions. Buddy, would you like to uh, add on any, add to anything that? Sure, uh, as uh, Alderman uh, Walker stated, um, it would allow for a mul multitude of, of uses, uh, which is not uncommon in uh, these types of districts and uh, other university towns and other urban areas. So this is basically put it in place so we can have a public hearing at the next meeting. That is correct. And that was a question I had, Alderman Walker. Is it your intent to actually have a public hearing on June 7th? Because then that needs to be a part of the call for the motion. Or do you want to see a draft on June 7th and then call for a public hearing the next meeting? So then you just have one public hearing total. Yeah. You still, we two. still would have two. Yeah. Um, I would say in this motion, let's go ahead and call for a public hearing. That way we can have the draft that puts, that puts I think we have the draft. I think it's going to be ready to go, right, buddy? Yes, sir. 
So just make that a part of the budget. Okay. And how much notice does staff need to give uh, in the public? You know, we talked about that, and since that's an internal custom and practice of the city, I think it's 15 days, but you'll check to see how you guys have done that. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a policy, you know, so it, it's not an actual ordinance that requires it. I don't think there's any, you know, but, but there's not time in advance and spoken to. So it's not like legal notice. Uh, just, I, I would say, unless the city attorney disagrees with me, yeah, just just a practical judgment, enough time where somebody would know that we're going to have a public here. So next board meeting would be, yes. is that the goal? Yes. Okay. Is it just two districts? Yeah. Yeah, this will just be in the T5 and T6 designated districts. So make a motion to approve uh, to move forward to set up a public hearing at the next our next scheduled meeting to discuss the revisions to these two ordinances. Motion has been made by Alderman Walker to call for a public hearing and to give community development direction to update section 7.3 building form section 7.4 building use and 8.4 uh, building use of code of uh, code of ordinances. City of Starkville, Mississippi, Appendix A, Zoning, Article 7, District Regulations, Section T, pertaining to principal entrance and building use as presented. Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Go here, second. Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Discussion. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying not all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion clearly passes. And the next matter on the agenda is a request for approval of the City of Starkville Claims Docket. So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion has been made by Alderman Maynard to approve of the City of Starkville Claims Docket for all departments, including a Starkville Utilities Department as of May 11, 2016, for fiscal year ending September 30, 2016, as presented. Alderman Maynard, is that the motion? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Maynard, do we have on the mayor? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. By a vote of six in favor, with one against, I have Perkins against. The motion passes. And that will conclude the open session portion of the agenda. The city attorney does have one item that is time sensitive that needs to be addressed in executive session tonight. Closed motion has been made by Alderman Maynard to go into closed session to determine whether there is a need for an executive session. Alderman Maynard, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> second by Alderman Vaughn. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the menu? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying no. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Motion clearly passes. I'll ask the public to vacate the premises so the board can begin closing the operations. Check out my books.